Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this seminar. Um, it's really great to be here and it's really great for me to have an opportunity to talk about my, my research um, and to be among such esteemed researchers in the field as well. Um, so my PhD is coming to an end. Um, hopefully by the end of this year, I would be in a position to submit my thesis. And the focus of my PhD throughout the last few years has been on the implementation of blockchain technology in construction. Um, the, the key output from that will be a framework. Um, parts of that framework I'm gonna talk about today, um, which is from a socio-technical socio -technical perspective. And I just want to try and explain um, how my research has taken that direction and what the importance of that is in construction. And what I'll do is um, I will intersperse that with um, the research that's that's currently taking place uh, in the field. Um, so you can see here on the, the right hand side, just how, of, you know, the first picture is staged. It's a very famous um, picture taken in Chicago, but I think that gives a, a good indication of how things have changed over the last few years um, from to where we are now in terms of the safety and the different levels of, of protection we have, but also um, from a technology perspective and how we have moved from um, very traditional methods of construction into very much modern and very much safety focused in, uh, sector. So the first thing I'll do is just talk a little, a little bit around social technical systems theory, just to kind of put that into context. And then I'll come and review some of the um, outputs from the literature um, that I've been focused on the last few years, and then talk about the, the kind of the two in context. Um, I think it's really, really important to, to remember um, whenever we conduct research on the construction sector is that the sector is really, is, is, there to meet the needs of society, whether that's the buildings, infrastructure, services, and everything that we construct is for use of individuals, for people that go about their day-to-day -day, um, lives. And I think sometimes that gets that gets kind of forgotten. Um, and this this idea of social technical systems theory is really about understanding what the link is between society and technology. Um, and unfortunately, in the past, there's been a focus on either one or the other rather than both together. Um, and so the idea is to think about how um, users, the diversity of users, think about um, use different systems, different assets, different buildings within the built environment, and try and think about how you take complexity off the user. Um, and when we run construction projects, they often consist of thousands of different stakeholders, um, different contracts <clears throat> coming together from different organizations, different um, different countries even um, to actually deliver this contract and all of those different organizations have different processes have different cultures and this brings this kind of um, particularly in in the western world as well but there's I think probably globally there are issues around um, collaboration and competition and not really wanting to work together with other parties for the interests of things like um, intellectual property and profiteering and things like that, just because of how the, the sector has evolved over time. And uh, so what that means is um, things don't really get focused in the way that they should. Um, so the concept of inter interpretive flexibility is, it has come about where it looks at how um, people design, interpret and use technology. Um, but it consists of lots of different things. It's, it's focused on how it's used, but it's also about um, focus on the interests of the human actors that you've got there, the developers, um, users and managers. And it's about putting the, the technology in the context of what it's, it's designed to be used for. And so what's really key for that is to consult with the people who will actually use those systems and use those, um, those assets and how you create something that it can be used in a flexible way because how a building is designed is not necessarily to be used. It's not necessarily how it's used in practice. And often there's a lag of a few years as well and, and, and things change in terms of what people's perspective are, uh, perspectives and desires and needs are for a certain asset before it becomes um, usable. And so one thing that can really help develop new systems and new assets is this idea of use cases. 
Um, the, the term use case is used quite freely, I think, in, um, in research and construction around the potential applications and how, um, you know, what the potential uses are of, of assets or, constru- or technologies. And, and I think it's actually not necessarily used in the way that it should. And the idea of a use case really is to think about all of the different ways that a technological system can be used and think about not just how it's designed, but how people actually use it in practice. So if you have um, somebody that sits down at a computer and starts using a system, invariably they would use it in a different way than it was intended. And the idea of use case is to think about all of those different interactions and create this system around that. And that's why you have this uh, this idea that you really need to um, think about design and use of assets and technologies together while they are slightly different, you do really need to focus on them together as a, as a system. Um, and so some basic concepts, the basic, uh, basic elements of socio-technical systems is around this, um, three different elements that integrate. So you've got production of artifacts that could be the technology or the, support, the, the aspects that support technology for, for the built environment, um, how that technology is diffused throughout the built environment, um, and then the uses of that te- technology. And what this does is we consider all these different things and how they integrate is it mitigates the risk of um, taking, taking a system for granted. And so you think about the, the, the maximum benefit you can get from a system. And it really focuses on, you know, the first thing that I mentioned a bit early on in the presentation is that it's about meeting societal needs. And so you use technology not for the sake of using technology, but to deliver a need or deliver good for, for the built environment and the people that, that um, live and operate within it. Um, so over the last few years, my uh, yeah, every PhD involves a lot of literature review. And I'm happy to be able to share some, some data that has just been accepted this week in, in a paper by Automation and Construction. Um, and this, this slide here really just characterizes the, where we're at in terms of construction research in, in, you know, on a global level. Um, this doesn't encompass every single paper on blockchain and construction. Um, you know, some, of them, some of the papers have come out since, I've had, um, since I wrote the manuscript. Um, but this gives you a bit of, a, of an indication of the different countries that are involved in the research, um, types of publications that are coming out. And you can see here really the, the speed of, and rapid increase of the number of um, papers that are coming out. And I think it just really shows the appetite for new technologies and particularly blockchain and the potential that it has um, for what we're looking at in, the, uh, um, in, the, in, in, in advancing construction generally. Um, what the, the literature has kind of, what's come out of that literature um, from the perspective that I took is that there are applications across several different areas. And these key areas here on the, on the, on the left-hand side cover a multitude of different applications, whether that's um, information management that looks at, for example, intellectual property uh, between parties collaborating on a project or, or exchange of information, whether it's increasing the speed of payments or making um, payments um, clearer or enabling automatic payments or interim payments from construction projects, whether it's about tying in objectives from um, the procurement into delivery or, uh, you know, all the different applications. And, 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 I, and I think I'm conscious of time not wanting to go into a lot of detail, but I think what's, what's really key and what's come out of this is that the technology of blockchain and smart contracts is really focused on delivering so, um, several benefits to the sector. And, th- and this is just a small list here, but um, and one of the, the key issues in, in construction is, is around trust and collaboration. And the, the, the technology that um, was explained in the, earlier, in, in the previous presentation is really around how you enhance trust between, between parties and you increase, increase transparency and all of these different characteristics, all these different things can add a lot of value to construction projects as we know them today. So um, we, we look where we are now and where we're heading towards. And if we can really work together as a sector and, and, and think about how we leverage all of this technology, we can achieve something really interesting, I think. Um, just to, to put that into a bit of context for, for the social side of, um, 
the, of the sector, what we've got here is, is the things, some of the things that, that distributed ledger technologies and smart contracts aim to do. And then you have some of the things that we need to consider from a social perspective and what that does to, to um, how we operate day to day or, or kind of how we, we live in our society. Um, and automating current processes is not, is not something new. You know, this has been around ever since technology kind of was, was around. Um, but I think for potentially one of the first times uh, points in history where job displacement could actually be a real thing um, with the level of automation that we could expect from DLT, you know, the internet, would, it, was, it was perceived that the internet could, could displace an awful lot of jobs, but actually what it did was it created this whole range of different jobs within, within um, the tech sector. Um, and there will probably be an element of that in distributed ledger technology and smart contracts, but I think at this point it's really something to consider as to what that will actually do in reality, um, especially as we have a growing population. Um, but we also have issues around um, privacy of data and if it's if it's put out on a blockchain and it's accessible, how do you deal with that on a, on a um, data protection level? Um, I think something that's, that's key in construction contracts today is um, flexibility. Um, someone might you, you call that kind of ambiguity in a contract. And if you remove that, which is a good thing, do you then remove the flexibility? And what does that do to the relationships on a construction site or within operations of buildings and that kind of thing? Um, and are you forcing new business models? And is it a win-win game or is it something, you know, does someone win and does someone lose? Um, and also, you know, the practical side of things, if you're, if you're taking current practices and you're digitalizing them, what does that do? How do you integrate the different systems to that and how usable are they? Um, you know, particularly in a sector that, um, at least in the West and in the UK, has an aging population, an aging workforce um, that seem to be reluctant to, to want to um, embrace digital technologies. And so how do you kind of bring all of this together? Um, so within the research I've been conducting, I've, I've identified a, a huge amount of challenges um, linked, but all quite separate, I think, and there's, there's eight different categories across the research. You can see each, each one of these small dots is, is an individual challenge. And what's really interesting about this, this kind of taxonomy is that the majority of them are actually human-centric challenges, they're not technology challenges. Um, and that doesn't mean to say that we can't solve some of those challenges with technology because we can, but I think, you know, it just reinforces the, the aspects of, of society and, and how you kind of operate within the, within the environment before you want to try and fix something. You have to really focus on what it is you're trying to fix in the first place. So my research, a part of the, the early part of my framework, which has really guided the rest of my research, has um, been developed around this four-dimensional model looking at technology, process, society, and policy. Um, and these particular uh, models in front of you here are analytical tools that can enable you to kind of understand the environment that we're in, think about where we are now, where we, where we want to get to, and what the changes and the processes are we need to do, and the things like um, who are the people that are going to be involved in that, um, and how does that... Um, impact the sector going forward. And so from the literature, um, these are just some of the aspects to consider from this social technical perspective. Um, from a technology view, you have, um, you know, technology of obsolescence is really quite an issue, I think, um, particularly when we're looking at buildings that are built to last for anywhere between 50 and 100 years, if not longer, um, where you have technology that might have um, a life time of maybe five or 10 years and what to start do, how do you change that out over time? Um, but also co-evolution of technologies, because when we talk about blockchain and smart contracts, they're not really standalone. You know, they, they, they rely on integration with things like build information modeling and um, the internet of things. And, and so you need these, these technologies to kind of evolve at the same time to be able to, you, to be effective. And issues around smart contracts. So, do we have skills to code them at the moment and are they secure? Um, we have restrictions in terms of um, binary code at the moment, but potentially that could change in the future. And I think it's, you know, we don't have a blockchain that offers perfect symbiosis of all the different things that we need it to do at the moment. So, 
you have to make a choice on what things you're prepared to, to you know, what, the, what is the, the most important thing for you. Um, and I think key as well is, you know, lack of digitalization at the moment in the sector um, means that an awful lot has to happen before we can start driving the implementation of blockchain. And maybe it will be blockchain that drives this digitalization. Um, but there are other things that, they, that need to fall into place at the same time. Um, and who's going to pay for it? You know, um, distributed ledger technology is a, is a distributed by name um, technology and do you distribute the costs or is it one organization that's gonna pay for that? Um, so all these different things that need to be considered and as well as you know, acceptance of society. At the moment, there's, there's still kind of a negative um, stance around it, particularly from Bitcoin and, and hacks for um, Bitcoin, it, uh, what, uh, cryptocurrency exchanges and, what, and, and people in society don't necessarily trust it yet. So how do you, carry, how do you create this trust in society? Um, and, you know, it's, it's a back-end technology. So how do you actually give, you know, how do you gain informed consent from the users? Um, do you impose it on them? Is it mandated? But then if you do that, um, what, what about data privacy and security and, and those kind of things? So all these different things that need to be considered from construction and how that, that, um, how that impacts people, society, the projects, the assets from all the different stages throughout the sector. So you've got from design through to construction, through to operation, and you've got all these different actor groups and things that you need to consider before you start um, creating these, these systems of technology and just make sure that what you create is really designed for the user at the end of the day. Um, so on the, just a kind of few key takeaways here is that the, the idea of this technical systems theory is really about creating this link between the technology and the, and the society that uses it um, and, and making sure that they're, they're dealt with together rather than separately um, as they have been in the past. And this comes from the idea that intended use is not always actual use um, and actually how a system is used in reality could actually be better than it was, in, was intended. Um, but you need to be able to make sure it's flexible enough to do that as well. Um, and we, as we've seen from the research that's coming out, um, there's really a lot of interest in, in the areas um, across the whole of the construction sector within distributed ledger technology and smart contracts. I think it's a really great place to be conducting some research. Um, but, you know, this idea that technology can solve all of the problems is something that we really need to focus on because it's, there's more to it than that. Um, you know, a lot of problems are human centric. So you have to understand the, the root of the problem before you can solve it with technology. Um, so the idea is just is, is really to make to make sure they're two integrated and not one one is not neglected in, in place of the other. Um, and all the different technology, um, the different dimensions that I've mentioned in my own research, they all have a lot of overlaps and think about how the different actors overlap within that and what that can do and how we can bring that together to create this built environment and to operate this built environment that we want to focus on. Um, so that is all from me today. Um, anybody who's interested, I set up a LinkedIn group a little while ago for doctoral researchers. Um, so you find it within this code here if you're interested, join. Um, we have people that share kind of events and, and research and ask questions and, uh, and it's just more of a, a, a kind of a space to, to create this bigger network. Um, so please feel free to join um, and I will hopefully interact with you on there. Thank you very much for your time um, and I'll be around for the Q&A later, but uh, yeah, thank you.